Welcome everybody, this is Josh Cunningham with Cunningham Cichlids uh, on YouTube, jcunningham0295. I'm going to go ahead and start a new series on my channel, it's going to be called uh, Species Cichlid Species Profiles. So I have around 100 tanks here in my fish room, as you can see, um, and as you follow me you know I have several aquariums. I breed mainly a lot of Tanganyikans, I'm starting to carry more, some more Malawans again, and some rare uh, endangered Victorians. So I figured I'd start a new channel called Cichlid Profiles and we're going to go around and we're going to profile, every week we're going to profile different species, how they breed, um, how they habitate, uh, you know, different aquarium requirements, food requirements, breeding habits, um, your aquarium, how it's set up, whether they're open water fish, uh, rock dwelling fish, um, how they spawn, if they're uh, mid-water spawning, substrate spawners, rock spawners, and such. So we're going to go ahead and today we're going to, we're going to, we're going to showcase Parasympachromus negropinus. So follow me as I go over to their tank here in one minute and we'll get started here. Thanks. Alright, so now we're in front of my Parasympachromus negropinus tank. This is currently a 75 gallon aquarium. I have wild caught Parasympachromus blue, neon, and I also have some albino Parasympachromus and also some Xenotilapia orchid jenny and the bays in this tank as well. I like to use my tanks and have my tanks with the top water fish like Cypricromus, Paracypricromus. I like to include a bottom dwelling fish in that tank as well as I feel it fills out uh, the tank a little bit better so you don't have a bunch of open area on top here with, um, with just bottom dwelling fish only. So as you see here I have a pretty open tank. Um, some substrate. The Xenos are more open water fish so I have some open substrate with some rocks to break up some territories for them but mainly mainly uh, a lot of open area for the Parasympachromus. Here we have here is one of my Parasympachromus males. He's nice looking. These guys are wild caught. These are really nice looking uh, Parasips. I had around 30 in the tank. Um, if we go down and look a little closer we probably will see some females holding. If I look here they're all going to dart a little bit, uh, bear with me, they're a little skittish to film, so this guy settled a little bit here, so you'll see a big camera coming at him and like what are you doing, but if we look, I know there's one or two holding, usually I have sometimes up to six holding um, in this tank here, so there's another male back there, there's a couple, probably three or four males in here, there's another one, Right there, this is the dominant guy, he runs the show in the tank here. And if we look center right there, there's a female holding there. So that's just one of, I think, two or three right now that are holding. So this fish is pretty neat. If you've never kept them, I recommend keeping them if you like Tanganyikans. Um, they're very easy to keep, they're very docile, they're not aggressive. The males will push on one another, um, just like any other fish will, but uh, they won't beat each other up or tear fins or nothing like that. Um, these guys, are, they mainly eat crustaceans in the wild. I feed mine a main diet of frozen food. So they mainly get frozen brine shrimp and frozen mysis. But they do get north fin cichlid pellets and north fin krill from time to time. But mainly I feed them a lot of frozen foods. I feel that keeps these guys in condition for spawning. At least from my experience with the fish. Um, very neat. They're only 75. I'd like to Eventually maybe get a bigger group of like 50 of them and be pretty neat to put a hundred gallon to get six foot tank together with these guys and And just let them go and habitate. Um, if you let the females They're maternal mouth brooders. So the female will will hold the fry for around three weeks if you let her spit it in the tank she abandons the fry and um, She joins the group again. So usually that doesn't work in this tank because the xenos will will eat the fry um, so I generally strip my females in, in this group. But uh, for those of you that don't know, um, these used to be with the Cyprochromus genus. Back in 1986, Paul reclassified them um, as, and brought them into their own genus for uh, a Parasypochromus negropinus. And there's two Parasypochromus negropinus. There's the blue neon and these um, the berlani is the other one. Um, that's classified as well. So there's two different pair of slips. These are the blue neons that I have. I've had this group for probably almost a couple of years now. Really, a little zoom out there. Really enjoy them. Um, peaceful group. Again, like I said, fun to 
fun to work with. A little, a little bit different with the as far as spawning behavior. Your Cyprochroma spawn midwater, and the uh, the male fertilizes the eggs in, in the female's mouth. However, with the Parasips, they spawn still not total substrate spawners like a lot of Malawans or your your uh, your Tanganyikan uh, Tropius and different mouth brooders would be. But they do they do uh, they do breed with the female drops her eggs in the sand, and the male is really close and drops his milk right over the eggs and as she's picking them up one by one. So that's different from a spawning behavior standpoint. I actually didn't realize that. I thought they were more of an open water spawning species like the, uh, the Cyprochromus were. So it was neat to learn that they have a different spawning behavior. Even though they share the same the same, same space as far as the open midwater of the, the aquarium here. So we'll go ahead and again, this blue this guy is pretty sweet. You can see them nice nice blue they do like to do vertical a lot so if you keep them and you have rocks i don't put rocks in the tank for them but uh sometimes the male will take up a cave if you give them caves to take up there's the other male right next to them but uh, if you put slate like on the back of the aquarium the males will go vertical um, a lot of times and they will go upside down i see my uh i see my males go back here by the sponge they'll be upside down sometimes that's just you think they're dead but they're not that's just how they uh they behave so again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you like my channel, please, please subscribe. This is just one one series that I'm going to do of multiple uh, multiple cichlid species profiles. So this is the first one. So bear with me as I work through my my filming and editing softwares, uh, filming and editing abilities, so we can uh, so I can bring this series to you. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it.